You see that right there? The Monster Squad soundtrack. That is one of the things that you can only find at this particular place. This is Grayface here in the Bucktown neighborhood, and it is everything that you wish that your bedroom was when you were a kid, if you were a kid of a certain age, like me, where you have horror movie stuff, music, videos, artwork, the whole thing under one roof here at Grayface. I'm just gonna give you a quick little tour before I talk to Ryan because when you walk in, it's also a museum too. And it's not a museum that you've probably been to or thought about before, but nonetheless, a museum. So I'm gonna walk back here and take a look. And then I'm gonna talk to Ryan because this is the fun part where you get to go back here and then you see something that has not really been seen anywhere else in the world. It's a recreation of John Wayne Gacy's jail cell. Check that out with original artwork on the wall. And I'm here with Ryan. How are you, sir? Hello. So this is your place. This is your namesake. Your Ryan Grayface is your name. And we are standing in the exhibit is John Wayne Gacy's a, a recreation of his cell of what it looked like with original artwork in there, right? Yes. So I acquired uh, his younger sister, Karen's living estate. Uh, meaning she's still alive. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, say three to five years ago. Uh, she cleaned out his cell when he was executed, mm -hmm. and so I now own all of that stuff. So everything from paintings to personal letters to he drew uh, a exact spe two spec map of the cell itself. So we know the exact dimensions, really? the, oh. the width of the bed. So this is uh, half an inch off, uh, mm -hmm. technically, but. This gives you an exact idea of what he was living amongst, and some of these same pieces were on the walls at the time of his execution. So, um, yeah, just kind of an intense experience. It is an intense experience, and you know, there, there's probably people watching who are completely enamored with it, and other people who might be like, "Why? What's the point?" So, what would you say to those folks? You know, because it's more about education than anything else. I'm yeah. guessing. Yeah. So. Actually, this, the whole like museum donation, $5 to go through concept is meant to help. It's like a fundraising effort. Mm -hmm. And for that, I mean, uh, so for eight, almost nine years now, I've been working on a Gacy long form documentary. We're talking like 30 long episodes, mm -hmm. not like a two hour thing. Um, and I don't have, you know, financial backing. I have not sold it to anyone or anything like that. I don't want to do an Indiegogo or one of those things. So I figure this would be sort of a creative, clever way of doing that. And the documentary, so in buying all these different Gacy estates over the years, I've probably bought 18 to 20 different estates pertaining to people that, you know, either family, friends, this sort of thing, right? Um, each collection that I have gotten, I mean, they're pretty vast. It's not just a few paintings. Mm -hmm. We're talking, I mean, with the Karen collection, it's tens of thousands of documents. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot to go through. But in each collection, I have found kind of life-changing nuggets about him and his case that were never made public. And I don't think John was smart enough to think that some weirdo like me would come along and buy all these different estates and start putting together this story uh, and the story is very compelling and disturbing and uh, everything from he had accomplices to he was definitely killing out of state to I, I can name names and it's very heady awful information not making the guy innocent at all the guy's mm -hmm. incredibly guilty mm -hmm. uh, but he did have help um, he I actually believe he probably killed over 100 people he was executed for 33 right so there's a lot to it it's very very heavy information but kind of like my plea to anyone watching this in the Chicagoland area is that I have found so many surviving victims that either never felt comfortable coming out back then mm -hmm. um, because they were embarrassed by what had happened uh, or or they did go to the police and the police dismissed them, you know, because they were gay or something very offensive for the times. Mm -hmm. um, so if, you know, if you were a surviving victim or you actually knew John, 
right? Or you, your dad used to be in business with him or something. And if you have any documents sitting around that have been sitting in your garage for years that you think are meaningless, they are not meaningless. Like these are all pieces of the puzzle that I am desperately trying to put together before it's too late. Uh, and too late meaning like, uh, you know, unidentified victims' families dying before it's too late to find who killed them and like very important information. So that, you know, all when I was 15, I started collecting this stuff and sure I didn't have that all figured out. It was more of like, I collect oddities. Mm -hmm. But now at 41, like there is a mission to all of this that is very important to me. Uh, before I die, I, I want I want all the truth to be told. Um, so yeah, that's, you know, the why. Lengthy, I know, but, <laughs> but it's important to get it out. Sure, and the general vibe of the overall space here when people come in, just give folks an idea what they're in for when they walk through the doors here. Because yeah. it's not a record store only. It's no. not videos, you know, it's and almost, all that. It's almost not even a record store. <laughs> right. But give your example of what this place is from the moment you walk in until you uh, yeah. come to this spot. Because this is kind of the last spot if people pay that donation. Right. So effectively, I collect, say, nine specific things in life and have my whole life. I mean, really, since I was a kid, and that's roadside America. So stuff you would have seen if you were traveling cross country in the 30s to the 50s, you know, when the government was like funding really these wild places off Route 66 and that yeah. sort of stuff. Um, you know, a lot of freak animals and cool stuff like that. Um, anything occult, and we've got some incredible pieces, a lot of original LeVay stuff, anything cult, you know, Heaven's Gate, Manson, this sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. True crime, it's not just Gacy, there's other, you know, people that I communicate with. It tends to all come back to Gacy, it's people that knew him and are also on death row at this point, this sort of thing. So, Interesting. but all that to say, that's like the museum part. Before you even get in there, in here, uh, I have a recording label called Terrorvision. Mm -hmm. I put out records, tapes, we put out movies, we make movies, we produce films. Um, but it's not just the stuff I do, so it's not totally self-serving. I just have one little rack of right. my stuff and then filled it with you know, popular horror icons and various things you can buy, posters and other soundtracks that aren't mine, toys, this sort of thing. Um, there's a goth zone, because I own a company called Never Not Goth. Mm -hmm. We do DJ nights and that sort of thing. And then the very front of the store is really like a homage to Grayface Records and Curiosities, which was the first store that I opened after leaving Chicago in 2010. Mm -hmm. um, I was in this neighborhood, had a flood, lost all my recording label stock and was really dejected. So I moved down to Savannah, opened up Grayface Records and Curiosities. And the first room within this whole crazy concept is basically a nod to what I'm still doing in Savannah. Um, so I'm kind of living in both places right now. Right, and you have everything in that room from taxidermy to old 80s horror movies to grunge music, metal music, and even uh, like a little tiki area. Like just yeah. the, this is like you've had this question, like, why would you sell this? It's because it's my store, is what you say. Yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, I, <laughs> and it's just what I like. They're literally just my interests, right? It's just what I collect, and it might not, you know, you, other people that collect mid century modern might scoff at collecting a Gacy painting or vice versa even. Sure. I don't care. It doesn't matter. That's not... This is, this is all that would interest you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and that's what the Savannah, the Savannah store was. I didn't have any money to stock it when I opened it because I literally had just been going through this lawsuit from that flood issue. Um, so I had nothing. I was like, I guess the stuff that wasn't lost, the stuff that was at my house in an offsite location, I'll just sell that. So like I literally just sold all my belongings in Savannah, uh, which was that same sort of stuff, tiki stuff and my incredible record collection that I still to this day, almost every day think about that I let it go, but 
I didn't have a way to stock a record store. So right. if I wanted to open a record store, you're going to sell all your records. And you don't sell everything in the store. There's a spot in the museum space is some of your most rare collections where you buy those just for the display to educate, yeah. to show people. Some of it might be controversial for certain people because it has to do with different religions and stuff like that. But it's there for a, as an education piece for people to really understand what they don't know. Correct. Yeah, I mean... Honestly, it's either me or my wife here mm -hmm. all, all the time, and we can speak about this stuff intellectually and explain the reason for everything. Um, and quite frankly, if someone's open enough to just hear me out, there's no way they'd be like, screw that guy, because mm -hmm. there's no ill intention behind any of this. Right. Um, I'm... My mom always told me I was an annoying kid. Like I, I asked a zillion questions. I'm curious, 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 and that's uh, has not has not changed. If anything, I'm actually now like a psycho about it. Like with the <laughs> amount of research that I'm doing, and it's a true labor of love for you. Uh, yeah, it's something or a labor of life, you know. <laughs> yeah. uh, and you even have the stuff for like the casual, maybe horror movie fan that walks in Correct. here with some of the more mainstream titles and things that people can buy for Halloween time or, you know, in general if for July or for August right. or for, you know, like for people who really love this, this genre of life that is, you know, maybe a little off center for the mainstream, but there's a lot of people that enjoy it. And for people who don't understand, it's a great place to understand it, learn it and really dive into whatever it is that you want to learn. That's, you said that way better than I could have. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if anyone has anything for sale, records, oddities, MCM stuff, uh, or, you know, going back to the, to the Gacy information, has information and wants to be interviewed for this upcoming documentary, like, just get in touch. Like, I'm very easy to communicate with, and it's, uh, I don't sell this sort of stuff. Right, right. Now. This is more for your collection. Well, yeah, I mean, for I, the collection. I, I will die with this stuff, and right. and it will go on for hundreds of years. You know, as uh, you know, I, ha I have a large museum in Savannah, Georgia, and obviously this now, um, like these things will will go on. So. For people who want have that stuff that want to get in contact with you, what's the best way for them to do that? Doesn't matter. DM me on Instagram, Facebook, phone number, whatever. Come in, say hi. Do you have a website for people? Yeah, just grayface.com. Got it. And real quick, you know, as people know where this is in this neighborhood, there's an homage, well, not an homage. You kind of have a collection of a former business Correct. that is now a, a rental option for people. Explain. So, okay. I lived here. I probably moved to this. Uh, 1917 was my, my pad for years, say 2002. I don't remember when I moved in there, but somewhere around mm -hmm. then. Across the street was a video rental store called Odd Obsession. Uh, that unfortunately closed during the pandemic. I think they were open for at least 15 years. Uh, I have been friends with Brian, the guy that started that company for a long time because I was an annoying customer who would rent constantly. Uh, he also has a new company called Deadly Prey that deals in these amazing Ghana posters. So check that out if you've not heard of that. Anyways, uh, when I came up with this concept for Chicago, I hit up Brian and was like, yo, what happened to Hot Obsession Like when you closed? And I was like, oh, it's all in a storage facility in Garfield Park. <laughs> um, and so I pitched him on reopening it here. So yeah, we're currently in the pro, I mean, it's one of the loftiest concepts of all time because I think their collection is 35 to 40,000 DVDs, Blu-rays, VHS tapes. And there's no real order to any of them. So like the rental copy is separate from the actual packaging. And I mean, talk about needle and haystack scenario times 30,000. So it's, that's the dream though, is be able to rent those out for people where correct. you can go grab it for them, bring it up and correct. have that in coming out of the basement here with you go down and grab it uh, for the people that yeah. are interested in from and a like, website perspective. Exactly. There's a website, Odd Obsession, I think it's just oddobsession.com or just Google Odd Obsession, and you can actually type in the movie you want and then it will populate a number and then I can go check the stock and bring that up for you um, is the idea. Of course, you know, I've probably processed four or 5,000 of the 30,000. Yeah, so, so it's going to be a work in progress. 
Uh, yeah. yeah. Unless anyone wants to say he ran everything on a volunteer basis, which is amazing. I've never even thought to hire people that way. <laughs> I always pay them. Um, but yeah, if anyone wants to, you know, sit in a basement and sort out DVDs all day, hit me up. Come find you. <laughs> uh, what are your hours and days you're open? So we're doing, I, I'd like to do Wednesday through Sunday, 11 to 7. Uh, Monday and Tuesday are like build days for me. So, um, you know, we'll see how that works. It, Wednesday's been very dead, so it might end up being Thursday. Th that's what we do in Savannah at the museum for some reason. Like, I can only people pull people Thursday through Sunday. So we'll see. At, at, at least Thursday through Sunday, 11 to 7, hopefully Wednesday. Well, awesome. Uh, Ryan, it's been a pleasure talking with you. Thank you. And I, thank you for the education of walking through here. We didn't. We just scratched the surface on what you have here, but people have been watching the video as we've been talking. All that stuff is here uh, right now, Wednesday through Sunday, potentially Thursday through Sunday, but go to the website yeah. to check it out. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, Appreciate no problem. It. All right, that's the story from the 78 here at Graveface, right off Milwaukee Avenue, Tom Barney, Chicago at gmail.com. If you have a suggestion for a story from the 78, also head over to the website, storyfromthe78.com. Thanks a lot. We'll see you later.